Have you ever turned your car key, heard the engine roar to life, and wondered why that moment is called ignition? It's such a common word that we don't even think about it. But behind that simple turn of the key, or that press of a button, lies a story of fire, engineering, and the human fascination with starting something powerful. In this video, we'll break down why is it called ignition, how it evolved from literal fire to high-tech electronics, and why it remains one of the most symbolic words in modern machinery. Let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. The word ignition comes from the Latin word ignis, which means fire. That's the same root you see in words like ignite or igneous rock. So from the start, ignition was always about one thing, starting a fire. When early scientists and engineers began experimenting with engines, they used this word quite literally. Because in the earliest days of internal combustion, what made an engine work was, quite literally, fire inside a metal chamber. You're creating small, controlled explosions of fuel and air to push pistons. That process is what makes your car move. So, ignition wasn't just a metaphor. It was a very accurate description of what was happening inside your engine. Before the age of engines, ignition referred to the act of lighting something up whether that was starting a campfire or sparking a cannon's gunpowder. The word appeared in English as early as the 1600s, meaning the act of setting on fire. But as humanity entered the Industrial Revolution, we began to tame fire in new ways. We stopped just lighting torches or ovens. We started harnessing it to move wheels, power locomotives, and eventually drive cars. So when engineers in the 19th century were inventing the first internal combustion engines, they naturally used the term ignition for that critical step of setting the fuel on fire inside the engine. It was the perfect metaphor, an ancient word for a new kind of fire. In the late 1800s, engines were still in their experimental phase. Nicholas Otto, Gottlieb Daimler, and Carl Benz were some of the early pioneers who worked on creating practical combustion engines. They needed a reliable way to ignite the fuel-air mixture in their cylinders. The first engines often used hot tubes, metal tubes heated by an external flame. When the fuel entered the cylinder, it touched the hot surface and ignited. It was a bit unpredictable and not very efficient. But when the electric spark plug was invented in the 1890s, it changed everything. That small controlled spark could ignite fuel at exactly the right moment, revolutionizing the efficiency and reliability of engines. So now the term ignition didn't just mean lighting a fire, it specifically referred to that crucial spark that brought an engine to life. When cars became more common in the early 1900s, engineers developed ignition systems, a coordinated series of components designed to deliver the spark to each cylinder at the perfect time. This included the distributor, ignition coil, and spark plugs. Turning the key didn't just start the car. It closed an electrical circuit that powered the ignition coil. The coil then built up high voltage and sent it to the spark plugs, where it jumped across a tiny gap, igniting the compressed fuel-air mixture. That series of tiny explosions drove the pistons, which turned the crankshaft, and the car began to move. It's wild to think that when you twist your wrist or press a button today, you're still performing a ritual that started with fire. The physical fire might now be invisible, hidden deep inside an engine, or replaced with electric signals, but the concept remains the same. Ignition is the act of bringing something to life through energy. Fast forward to today, 
and ignition has become mostly electronic. Many modern cars don't even have keys anymore. Instead, you press a button and sensors detect your key fob, sending a digital signal to the engine's control unit. That signal tells the computer to start the ignition sequence, fire up the fuel injectors, and create combustion. It's almost poetic. What used to be an actual spark of fire is now just a pulse of electricity. Yet we still call it ignition. Why? Because the essence hasn't changed. Whether it's a flame or a circuit, it's still about triggering the start of something powerful. Even electric cars, ironically, which don't have any combustion at all, still use phrases like turn on the ignition or ignition switch. It's a linguistic fossil, a remnant of the past that stuck around because it perfectly captures that feeling of starting something alive. Interestingly, the word ignition isn't limited to automobiles. You'll find it in rockets, furnaces, and even nuclear fusion experiments. In rocket science, ignition is the exact moment when fuel starts burning in the engine, propelling the spacecraft forward. In nuclear physics, ignition refers to the point where a reaction becomes self-sustaining, when it creates enough energy to keep itself going. So whether it's a spark plug, a rocket booster, or a reactor core, ignition always represents the moment energy comes alive. It's the spark that starts a chain reaction, no matter the scale. It's fascinating that a word rooted in ancient fire has survived through centuries of technological change. From torches to engines to electric vehicles, ignition has adapted while keeping its essence. It's proof that language evolves just like technology does, carrying echoes of the past into the future. So the next time you start your car, take a second to appreciate what that word ignition really means. It's not just an automotive term. It's a story that stretches from the first campfires lit by early humans to the engines that drive modern civilization. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.